Hi Grand School, this is Elliot for my fourth video. Uh, this is a live play session. Um, it's a pre-recorded session where it's a session I played I think five days ago and now I'm going to commentate over my play. So some hands are still in my head and some hands are not quite there now so it's going to be quite good to go back and go over my thought process. Um, I'm going to pause between hands of where I think it's worth explaining. Uh, the theme for this video is uh, knits. We're going to be looking at, the, at how to deal with knits and I've chosen very very nitty tables. I went into the PokerStars lobby and searched by VPIP and I found this, this, the, the tightest VPIP I could find and I sat at all those tables um, which are the grey tables, the 2 and L tables and then there's a sort of looser table which is the red uh, 10 and L table just so we can see a sort of um, difference between all the play it was actually quite hard to find nitty tables so you know we're lucky in the sense that we're not going to have to be dealing with these player types all the time but I just want to show how your play can adjust if you do have nits on your table and ideally like I said in the video you're looking to have them on to your immediate left two seats to the immediate left so that you can have them in your blinds and steal their blinds uh, sorry not in your blinds you'll have them in you can steal their blinds essentially okay so I'm going to go through the video and highlight uh, different plays and we can go from there so this table table one and table two and table three are the tighter tables and this 10 and L table is the looser table just so we can see a difference um, okay so let's have a quick look if anything's coming up we're just sort of looking for nitty action I do choose to let me just pause the video here on table one choose to see bet um, on the prefop razor into a zero zero the board does have a flush draw on it and it but it's very loosely connected um, they do have some ace jacks they do have some eights nines and tens um, I'm trying to see bet essentially just try and take this down against whiffed hands anything that's missed um, probably won't be barreling off too much um, just depends on the next few cards so I will I see bet and they call quickly go back to table two so table two I've identified two nits here and this is with a three six suited this is an easy steal and I imagine I will just check that I steal for a min raise so stealing for the smallest amount so I can steal very cheaply all the time and these guys will just fold I imagine once I've seen this I then mark them immediately as nits for both those players. Again, pretty standard. Um, we'll get onto this king queen hand in a second. Just want to bring up another point. Six seven off in uh, on table two while I'm in the cutoff. Um, I'm going to open this, and I'll probably open it for 2.5x of the big blind. Reason for this is that I want to steal very widely versus nitty tables essentially when you have a knit in the button or on the button and you're in the cutoff is essentially you get the button twice because they are so tight they won't open very often so i can use my six seven suited here as a steel versus this player type the only thing to consider is that i do have a fish in the big blind the green player who is shorter stacked so we definitely have a fish so my idea here is to go in and uh, see bet against this player try and take it down and use my position also like I said the more hands you play plus in a plus EV manner the better you'll do so you want to try and find these opportunities not to fold that 6-7 off but to open wider but your table conditions must be correct table one I flop uh, sorry, I turn a queen. There's no need to bet on this board. Now this guy, uh, now um, our nitty cutoff player is called. This is a simple check call. So 
So as the play goes around, I probably open for 2.5. And I will call with my queen on table one. So we flop seven, eight, deuce on table two. And this is definitely a board that I would see bet. Um, I want to protect my seven. They can have some aces, over cards. I don't want to turn to to bring those, I don't want to check behind. So it's very important to bet this so I can either get the fold or protect my sevens from overcards. Okay, so I imagine, I don't think I bet here, I think they actually lead, um, but it's just something to bear in mind that that's a board that I will be see betting against this player. Um, table three, this is what, um, there's a 28-10, and they are um, three betting me. This is a hand that I'm just going to four bet, get it in. I think that's pretty standard. Um, and it's interesting to show this is the difference of the table. So I've already naming them as a reg aggressive. And they will see that. And then we'll four bet. Table one, table two, sorry, excuse me that the um sorry our fish leads into me and i call there's nothing that you need to do i don't really want to raise here um because the board's not that drawy we obviously six five and uh nine ten are in their range just, and they have some ace um eight, eight x but i can just call down here relatively often and if they check to me then take the lead and either choose to go for value a little bit later in the hand. They lead again for a very small amount. Um, so this, I imagine I just call this pretty straightforward. Four bet my ace king on the table three, pretty standard. And again, three betting my kings into what looks like a, a nittier player but it's only nine hands so you have to bear in mind in fact it's the same player that's on table one up here i think they turn out to be a wreck so it's important to understand sample size so I, again i call with my sixes versus the uh the fishy player who's donk and they check and i can't see myself going for much value, so I check behind and they let out with ace-queen. So immediately from that point onwards, I don't mark them as a passive fish, I mark them as an aggressive fish, someone who's going to take the lead and bluff into me. And uh, so we'll be looking into those players in, in a week or so. The aggressive fish, they're actually one of my favourite players. Uh, interestingly, that they, they folded to the ace-king, so I can understand that this is someone who is, again, an aggressive regular who can 3-bet light. So it's just interesting to bear that sort of dynamic in, in mind. Ace-4 on table 2. I did think about 3-betting this. It is in my light 3-betting range. Um, I think I back out. I back out for one or two reasons that... The player under the gun is a 10-10, so they're, again, they're, they're on the tighter side, so their range is going to be a little bit more stronger. If this was a, a reg, then ace four would be in my uh, light three betting range versus under the gun. I did also just think that I've just won some money off the aggressive fish, and they could either call or, or get will be over aggressive with me so I actually chose to fold my ace four but it, it did I did consider um, three betting this ten nine is an easy fold from the small blind so the six seven suited hand we're going to get into now. So 
I'm deciding either to fold this or to call. Now if you have a knit to your immediate left or a tight regular, I can flat this profitably because I don't risk getting squeezed unless they have a strong hand. So I'm quite happy to call with my 6-7 suit with implied odds versus these two players and also that the big blind may come along as well but 6-7 suited is a good multi-way hand and I'm getting a very good price considering we're multi-way so again I, I choose the flat I think which I do ace 6 on table 2 again I choose to open I've got nitty players I'm looking for folds I'm also a6 is not bad versus a, f um, a fish's range because they can call with a lot and I can actually have an ace that dominates do doesn't dominate their range but can dominate dominate sorry excuse me it doesn't dominate their aces because they obviously have better aces in there but the ace does very well against their range so I can open this and also it's ace six suited so I can do some post flop moves as well So I'm choosing the C bet into this player. The board's relatively dry. I also have a backdoor heart draw, and I, my six is good because it blocks some. It blocks the straights or has backdoor draws to the straight. So I can C bet this, try and take it down, looking to probably barrel some turns as well. Table two, the. Um, okay, so so the the knit checks. Now the knit is checked on a king 4-4 four, four board, meaning that they don't have a king, because this is a pretty slam dunk c-bet versus a fish, especially if I'm in the hand as well. They can have a set of kings for a full house, but that's a very that's a small amount of combinations of those cards, it would only be three. So there's likelihood that they have capped their range so they don't I can quite easily here move them off if I if I choose to bet um, also the fish is checked behind um, so again they can be passive they can choose to stab at this but the board is relatively dry so it doesn't hit many people's range so I actually chose on this turn card because it gives me an 8 so I have a gut shot so I have some outs to a straight I can actually take a an aggressive line and try and take this Hand, uh, take this hand down. And my C bet works on table two. So I lead 12 into 19. And the fish calls. So this is a little bit of gamble on my behalf, but I don't put any kings in their range and I don't think that I can win at showdown so I have to make some bet on some level to take this down otherwise it's a check fold what I actually do is I choose I think I shove because just because I thought they capped their range and I don't see many king x's and I can still have a king in my in my range and they fold. It's a little bit over aggressive and maybe don't try it all the time but it's a board that I thought I could get away with. I could get looked up like by pocket nines something like that um, but again there are more um, hands that don't hit that board than uh, pocket pairs so I think that's okay to, to make that quite aggressive move. I think table three in a second I'm going to ISO the fish. It's a bit difficult because of my player, but let me just explain the bet size, the ISO size. So I've chosen. They've limped. We have another limp behind. So normally, if there's one limp, I'll ISO four big blinds. But because of the limp is here, I'll ISO five big blinds. Just want to make it difficult 
for the, more difficult for these people to call. I don't want to give them cheap odds. And um, I've got the best position in the house. So I'm easily going to ISO this up. Pocket aces. Simple steel against fish. I'm still going to open 2.5x. I want to balance my range against them. And try and steal as much as I can. So table three. Uh, I'm not very happy with this flop, even though I do have a jack with a blocker to the straight. I've got two people that have called, and I think that board can hit a number of draws quite well. And there can be pairs in there. So I actually decide not to see about this board and check it back. Table two, easy set mine with pocket fours versus again what looks like a relatively tight player. Their range is going to be super strong, and I have good implied odds with my pocket fours. Can't see myself being squeezed by the tight uh, nits on my left, so I can call more with less fear of being squeezed or. I can more or less guarantee that I'm going to see showdown. And if these guys do three bet, it's definitely for value. And there is definitely an argument if these guy, if say one of these uh, three bet me and this guy calls, who is in uh, middle position, then I can flat with pocket fours because we have, there's three of us going multi way to a flop. So something to bear in mind there. So now our nitty player checks to me. I'm not putting any over pairs in their range at all. Probably not even hands like ace queen of clubs, ace jack of clubs, any kind of draw. So I think they're completely whiffed here and they're just going to give up. Um, I have pocket fours, so obviously I wanted to protect that versus their range. So I would stab on this board and look to take it down reasonably often I think. So they tank for a while and then they fold. Table three, this is all kind of kicking off here. And um, the guy flopped a set of sevens. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the person in the cutoff called off with seven six, which is not probably the best call off for it. Depends how much was in there. But we don't know quite much about this, but anyway, that's beside the point. So I like my check back because I think that this hits a reasonable amount of their range, even you know, pairs and whatnot. So essentially I just had ace high there. If it goes check check twice and a good turn card comes, I can consider trying to make a, a stab at that because I've seen two checks in front of me. So this is where I come up with my idea for marking tables. As I said, normally I have a color coded to stake, but I think something which is quite useful if you guys can do this and you're on poker stars is color the table how tight or loose you think it are. So what I've done is blue is my color for nits and I change all the tables to nitty tables. So obviously reds. Now I've made a mistake while I was changing my tables here that queen nine off, I just fold it in the cutoff on table one where I'm circling. I would have, that should have been an open. But, um, the reason for that is again, really tight players. This is a simple steal. Um, and I missed it and um, when I watched it back for the second time I was like damn it I missed it but I must have been coming up with this genius idea of changing table color so again just uh, watch out for a few things there ace 8 could have been an open 8 queen 8 on table 2 in the cutoff but again we've got a more sort of aggro player so they're going to give us a little bit more problem on here with queen nine. All the players are tight, so it's very easy to uh, open there and just print a little bit of money. Uh, 
Apologise for the player here. I'll work out a better way of doing this for next time. Ten nine to fold on table four out of position. I get three bet when I open um, on the cutoff. I open quite wide these days. I have like a thirty percent open on the cutoff because it's such a good solid stealing spot that you should be a little bit more aggressive on there. I find a lot of weaker regs have a twenty five percent open, but you need to be opening wider than that. Um, anyway, beside that, I get three bet to eighty seven nine of hearts is just not good enough to uh, defend against um, anybody really. It's quite hard. If we're very very deep, there's an argument for doing it because I have position, but in this situation, it's just an easy fall. So I just let it go. Pocket sixes table one. I'm going to be uh, c betting this. It is against a fish. But again, I want to protect my pocket sixes against their over cards. I do have backdoor draws, two straights, so I can fire again on decent turns. So I think that's okay to do a C-bet. They've also folded 100% C-bets, which means once probably in the nine hands that I have. But it's, it's just good to know sometimes to have that little bit of... So table one, this is not really a knit thing per se, but it's just good to bear in mind for fish. So this player opening and under the gun on table three, they have a very short stack. They're less than half stacked. So mining pocket threes is not important. You wouldn't do it. It's just a bad thing. You don't have the implied odds later down the line to call that. So this should be a fold. However, I do have position and I think I'm circling here when I'm thinking of it on a player who is a clear fish who's an 80-10. So actually I'm mining not against this person, but I'm mining against this person here and hoping to hit my set. Um, as I can as I'm pretty sure I can get paid. And actually this this guy's extra money is pretty good. So that's why I flap my pocket threes here. If we had a very nitty table and this player didn't exist, this would just be an easy snap fold. Okay, so just bear that in mind. I've even marked him as a whale, just so I can um, be clear with my thoughts and, and demonstrate it for you guys. Player on table three, who wasn't in the gun, leads out for under half pot on a 10-10-7 board. Pocket threes, I can't really call here. I have a player still to act. Um, it's quite strong leading in, even though the bet size is small. But again, their stack size is quite small, so it doesn't have to be super strong. So I'm quite happy just folding my pocket threes. I didn't miss, didn't hit my set, so I'm out. So as you can see, I constantly name a number, um, not name and number, color code, excuse me, all the players. So every time I really look at someone, the color coding system helps me with uh, my table selection and how to adjust my play. I'm just checking out the difference of this 10-10 jack-jack can between those two guys, and I think it's pretty straightforward considering the... Um, the guy with the jacks hat was an aggro fish. I'd probably be calling off there myself. So. so we have a really tight table. Excuse me for table two. We have knit, knit and regs, and then a um, an aggressive fish in what is now the small blind at the moment. So it's quite fun this table. It's a good. You can play a lot of adjustments. And, So 
So I imagine table 2 I'll steal for 2.5 even with something as weak as 10.6 off. Now normally against a reg that's quite a bad stealing range because you'd be stealing quite a lot but these guys just don't fight back. So this is something that I can just almost print money against by stealing that stealing quite wide. So it's a pretty good strategy. Again, 8-5 here against a reg. And what looks like a fish um, over seven hands. But I don't mind stealing this wide. I steal quite wide a lot. Um, and I can possibly see, profitably see that here as well. Pocket queens against a limping fish is a standard ISO. So king nine here. Again, opening. This should be a standard open for most tables, uh, but against the against the nits, it's just an easy open. Now the guy. Uh, sorry, not say the guy. The uh, the. Uh, our loose fish in the middle position shoves and I've got queens and the money in there already makes it that I should call off um, so I have to I think it's fine just to call off here they can have jacks, they can have ace-king so it's fine and they do have ace-king and I luckily flop a set while they flop a king and I take it down essentially we're flipping there um, but I have to call off which is fine King nine on table two. I get three bet by our small blind knit. This is nowhere near my defending range. So this is just an easy check fold. We don't make money by calling this. We make money by stealing their blinds and folding when they give some action. So this is quite happy to um, to just fold this preflop. I play an interesting hand on table four. I, I min opened my eight five of hearts. They're called by the fish and they donk two into ten. So a lot of the time here, these they're not their range is relatively weak, and I actually choose to to raise it here because they can have draws. They can have some weird straight draws. They can have, you know, an ace four here that's just trying to see a cheap showdown. These they sort of donking players make, make very weird plays. So I choose to raise it up with my eight five. I'm doing it for one or two things. If they shovel me or check raise, then I can fold it. Um, as I don't think they would do that as a bluff and also I want to charge charge them here and getting them to call with you know six five is a good thing getting them to call with ace three ace two is a really good um, is a really good thing for me so I choose to raise it up and they call now I flop uh, I turn sorry open trips which is pretty good which is interesting so they do lead and I imagine do I call? I think I call now yes I call excuse me so I call and I'm slightly worried that they have a, a better hand now than once I've raised now they bet up very small. I think now it's just easy value and raise it up. I see something a bit bigger than that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Let's find some more hands with 
knit. So I've decided this guy is a sort of more this purple guy here is more of a reg. Their stats are picking up, so I've changed it. So be aware to change those hands. Ten falls a fold, table two, queen falls a fold. Five tens a fold. Sometimes we're just folding. Crazy open on table two, opening to 12, which is it's quite a lot. It's just an insane amount of it's like six big blinds to open, so easy fold. I'm not quite sure what they're trying to do it for here. But if it's a value or a bluff, I guess it's a value. They're just trying to get called, cool, but they won't. Not from knitting players out here, they'll, they'll just fold this. Unless, the thing is, the only hand that calls you there is the one that beats you. Very nice and easy folds. King eight. I had king eight here. King eight off on table one. That is just it's still not quite good enough to it's still on the looser side. I think I could possibly open it in the cutoff if it was very nitty. I think that's okay. This guy, uh, the purple one here is turning into a bit of a reg now so we want to consider tightening our opening range up ever ever so slightly okay let's replaying this hand quickly checking out what happens and I then change this player from an aggro fish to a calling station because they cool down pretty bad. Rewind that hand and just double check it and see what you guys think. 9 10, easy open versus the aggressive reg. I called. I'm not going to see about this. This is just a check call. Now they check that, that's quite interesting. I think that's when they have showdownable hands like pocket eights. They can also have weak ace, weak aces that they don't want to value bet. Um, I don't really put a flush draw in their range. They can have some nines, nine eight, nine seven, nine jack that they just want to check back. Uh, what else they can have? They can have some five x that they, um, they choose to check back as well. I do think they would call with some, some hands like 5, 4 suited as they are pretty loose. They're a 27, 14. So they're not like a super aggressive reg. They're more of like an in-between fish which we'll get onto later or a um, semi-aggressive fish. So they will call quite a lot in my opinion. So I'm just sort of ranging them there. And uh, the, the flush draw gets there. Now they bet. I really can. I think this is pretty easy fold. Um, I'm really only beating a bluff at this stage or something that's gonna like a like a five I'm I'm beating some weird five but like I said there's nine jack there is some aces that they well no aces may check back actually thinking about it. I just think there are certain hands and now I've checked back all those streets. I don't have a flush, I don't have any value, I have very weak showdown value. So they can bluff into me, but again 
I have to be right quite often here to cool down to what are they being. I have to be right 27% of the time here, which I don't think I am. I think it's maybe, yeah. So I'm okay with folding, I'm okay with folding it against this player type. Aces table four under the gun opens, so I'll definitely be three betting and now I'll squeeze that position because I want to make it nice and big, not too big. But there's two players, so I think that's a reasonable that's my sort of standard squeeze. So I sometimes go a bit smaller, maybe like two big blinds smaller. <coughs> I get a fold. Queen eight's now a fold. This table is table four is getting less and less uh, nitty. Um, we have a, a regular here, and we have what looks like a fish here, and there two are left. So it's not the best positioning. So our table was not super great here, and we'll probably look to change that out unless something happens around this area. We do have a fish here a, uh, who has just under half stack so that's not too bad but for the sake of this video I chose to play nitty table so I actually think I swap that table out in a minute. See me swapping it out. I actually think I can't work out if this is a good call or not with King Queen off because I've opened for four big blinds and I think I thought it was the fish still, but no, they've changed. I have marked them, so it's a close call. I choose to check back so that they open up. I check back on this board. And the reason I check back on the board is that the board is so dry, 2, king, 5, and they've opened 4x. So I don't think I'm going to get three streets of value from my hand. So I don't mind checking back one street and then betting turn and river. So pocket queens, pocket jacks, and 10s can call. I think that's probably a better way rather than betting and then them check calling and then check folding. It, it depends. So I don't mind checking back one for deception as well. It's not it's not a bad way of just balancing my range. So I don't mind checking back here. And then I go for some value. I think they fold. I'm just trying to convince them that I don't have a king and it's okay to call. Folding king 10 on table 3, the guy doesn't have as much money from under the gun open and um, it doesn't play well as a cold call when there's other players to act. Table three, I'm de debating whether to. Normally, I would squeeze. I would normally add three bet, but this the player on the button is looking pr pretty nitty, like a fifteen eleven. So I don't think it's quite a good um, 
three bet light. Now this player is called, I only have to call one more big blind to see a flop. And I can flop a better, excuse me, I can flop an ace. Uh, and these guys are quite wide, uh, especially, uh, let me start that again, sorry, I apologize. So I can flop an ace. The, the 1511 can have a fair few aces and they won't pay me off if an ace comes, but I can make money against the small blind and it will only cost me one big blind to get there. Problem is I don't have to go crazy on flops because I have lots of reversing five dogs. So as long as we have that in mind, then it's better to, 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 to have that in our thought processes. Okay. So I'm actually changing the uh, the big blind to a nitty player. There's a possibility of leading that turn as a bluff um, because a lot of everybody's checked back. Um, but the king can hit the nits range. But now once everybody's checked back, the problem is I've now flopped bottom pair on a player that checked round. And I'm getting a reasonable price to call against someone who didn't give much action before. I expect to lose that hand fairly often, but I have to call uh, because they can have some bluffs in the range. They can have some ace highs in the range. And this is the type of player, someone who's a 45-27, who's reasonably aggressive over that small sample, um, who can make a play like that. So it is, it's okay to call, I think. I say with my ace-queen on table two, 7-4, spades is an easy fold versus a really nitty open. Table one, I will probably squeeze. I think squeezing here is fine. I'm sort of, as this hand's happening, I'm sort of deciding this, uh, purple's my normal reggae colour, but as this player hasn't, um, topped up their stack and they're sort of running a 3330 so they are wider but sample size is not great obviously but they haven't reloaded their stack so to me that's like well they're probably more fishy so I don't really want to call with maze queen and go multi-way out of position so it's easier to squeeze knock out the under the gun razor because as we've seen he's a 2318 his range can be wider than a nits from under the gun so it's, I can start squeezing squeezing this player. I want to knock him out and I want to get heads up with the fish. So this is one of the, uh, just, this is what a good squeeze spot to, you bluff, you're essentially bluffing against the undergun open, but you're doing it for value against the cutoff open. So it's a good spot to squeeze here. I'll talk you through this hand. Oh, I've actually folded. Well, I'm going to quickly go through the hand on table three quickly so our sort of aggressive fish opens and I choose to flat with my ace nine I flat for two reasons that we have quite a, a big fish uh, in the small blind and then knit as well who may or may not come, come, come along but I do have position it's not a great hand but the fact that I have position and these guys' ranges are wider than mine is actually better for me. I flop top pair, which is cool. And the aggro fish leads out. I actually choose to click this back, so just double his bet. Um, reason for this is that I don't want people to draw to a diamond and call and uh, there are some um, straight draws out there so I like to charge it back I think the bet doesn't need to be super big because I'm almost re-raising someone and these guys are going to find it quite hard to call because this guy can re-raise back so small bind, big bind will find it quite hard to call 
because the original razor can raise again. So they're kind of stuck. So it makes it quite easy for me to just click it, click it back for value. King five, table one versus two nitty players is an easy min steal open. Ten seven out of position versus a aggro fish is a pretty easy. Um, I think I. What did I do there? I just oh he min he um. I'm working out if I should raise. Sorry, excuse me. Let me just go back to this hand because this is what we're talking about. This is more important. Okay, so king five. Do I raise? Do I choose to raise? Anyway, king five on the button is an easy open versus a small blind and a big blind. The flop comes down, ace, ten, deuce, rainbow, um, not rainbow, hearts. This guy's range, the fish in the big blind, his his range is, is super strong yeah, at this moment. Because they've called... I expect them if I see bet here and they they can and they call I'm just throwing my money away so it's a lot easier to check behind which is what I do and then do a delay C bet on this board here now it's such a drawy board they don't have essentially Queens Kings um, Ace King because this is the kind of hand they would three bet. So they've got a relatively weak range, probably under pairs, but has showdown value against me. So I need to delay C bet this board just to get them to fold out those hands. Okay, so this is a good example of how delay C bet works against it. I think I played that 10 7 hand horrible against that player there. Just it's a bit funny going back and watching your hands later. Pocket deuces table three is an easy flat completing the action. It's not the best when you're in the small blind because you don't complete the action. So but easy fold, terrible flop for me, don't really hit anything. Lots of draws in there and um, aces, ace x and things like that. So I just can't really con continue. Really important as soon as you see a player sit down on um, in a half stack, just label them a fish straight away. It doesn't even matter what type, just label them a fish, just so you've got them for later when you see them in the lobby. Right, so I'm pausing the video there, guys. That's been about. 50 minutes which has been pretty long um, I hope that's been good I hope you enjoyed something and uh, I may have rambled a little bit but I think I've got across some good points on how I play and how I use my table selection and then there's a lot of points in there specifically to how I play hands with nits and how I steal and things like that versus them especially the delay C bet earlier that was quite good really good example of not going too trigger happy and uh, also seeing the difference in how the tables play. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Um, my next video will either be another live play video where I'm just playing in real time, probably not commentating. And um, and then I will do a episode on aggro fish, which I'm really looking forward to. But it takes a long time to put the PowerPoints together. So I'll probably do a live play video in the meantime while I'm putting that together and then I can go I'll do a really nice video of a PowerPoint presentation on Agrofish because they are one of my favorite people to play against. They are, they almost, they give you their money, which is really nice and they bet they actually bet it for you. Okay guys, so this is Elliot for Grinder School. Take care. Take care. Bye.